we're going to get right into the Word of God today. Uh, today is Resurrection Sunday, and we're going to focus solely on the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He has conquered death. He is the victorious King of kings. Can I get an amen? Amen. He is the reigning Lord of lords, and that means that he has all power, all authority, all dominion today. Today he has that power. This also means that Satan is defeated. Sin and death have been defeated. And through the death and resurrection of Christ, we have the hope of eternal life today. Amen. Well, I'd invite you to turn uh, in God's word with me today to Luke chapter 23, and we are going to read together the account of the resurrection. Those of you who were with us Friday night, uh, remember we read through the account of the crucifixion and what that means for us today. Uh, Jesus, his final words before breathing his last where it is finished, that his work was accomplished, what he came to do on this earth was fulfilled, his mission was fulfilled, the will of God was fulfilled, and the resurrection is, of course, the, uh, the exclamation point to that work, showing us today that Jesus has the power over death as he claimed he did. And so in Luke chapter 23, we're going to start in verse 50, and uh, let's read this together. It says, Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. Now, Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus. He was someone who uh, saw Jesus as the Messiah. And so it says he was looking for the kingdom of God because he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. So verse 52 says, This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, Two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, Rise, And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb, returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale. And they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And he went home, marveling at what had happened. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we can read the scriptures and see that you rose 
again, that you rose from the dead. And we celebrate that today. And as we look into this passage and uh, meditate on these words, I pray that you would speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, what I want to emphasize regarding the resurrection is four reasons why the resurrection is important. Four reasons why the resurrection is important. There are many reasons why the resurrection is important. We don't have the rest of our lives to sit here and go through them. So I'll give you four today. Uh, th these are things that are critical to our faith, are critical to living a life as a believer today. And it's important to reflect on the resurrection, not just on Easter Sunday, really throughout all of the year. And really, it's important for us to really have a, in our minds and in our hearts, a, a firm foundational grasp of what the resurrection means for each individual believer as we live our lives in a fallen world. Today, there are over two and a half billion, billion self-proclaimed Christians. Two and a half billion. The resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone of Christianity. It, it is the foundational piece upon which the Christian religion stands. Christianity is not built solely on ideals, on, um, on ideology. It's, it's not built on just stories. It's not built on a particular prophet that came along and, and made prophecies. Like many other religions today, Christ, Christianity, unlike any other religion, is built upon an event, an event that took place over 2,000 years ago, an event that changed human history forever. Not just Christianity. Every soul upon the planet was changed because of this event. This event changed human history. Regarding the resurrection, there are six different New Testament authors that testify to the resurrection. When we look at the four Gospels, of course, we have Matthew, we have Mark, we have Luke, we have John. And then we have the Apostle Peter. We see that when the Holy Spirit fell upon the, the early church in, in the upper room, that, that the church began to boldly proclaim the gospel and the good news, and Peter stood up and delivered a powerful sermon built on the resurrection of Christ. And several times throughout the book of Acts, Peter mentions the resurrection of Christ. And then in his book, and, and letter, his epistle, in 1 Peter, he, he speaks of the resurrection. And then we have the Apostle Paul, who of course testifies to the resurrection. This means that we have several historical accounts and documents that verify the resurrection event in history. Yet, how many historians today and people today want to deny this event? There are other events in human history that historians are so quickly to verify as an event that happened with far less historical evidence, far less uh, historical uh, documents. The event of the resurrection is historically sound, historically documented. Paul mentions the resurrection in 1 Corinthians. Now, do you know when 1 Corinthians was written? It was written roughly 55 AD. That's, a, that's, a, that's about 20 to 25 years after Jesus died and rose from the dead. 
And I would invite you at this time, I want to look at Paul's testifying and testimony of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you have your Bibles, you could turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to see just why the timing of this letter, the fact that we know throughout history of when it was written is a lot for us today. If it came 20 years after Christ, that has implications than if it was written three or four, 400 years after Christ. In, in chapter 15, starting in verse 3, the Apostle Paul says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Let's skip down to verse 14. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. Verse 17 says, and if Christ has not raised, has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Verse 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The Apostle Paul here is speaking facts. And he's speaking with such confidence, knowing that there are people, mind you, this is 20 years after the resurrection, after the claimed resurrection, certainly after the crucifixion. If, if there were people there who didn't know of the resurrection, they certainly all knew of the crucifixion. And it says here in verse uh, 6 that at one time Jesus had appeared to more than 500 brothers. And Paul verifies here that most of them are still alive. Now, how would Paul know that? Well, because he knew a lot of these people. Paul was a prominent Jew before being converted by Christ himself. Before Christ stopped him in his tracks when he was in hot pursuit against the early church to destroy the church, Jesus encountered Paul and transformed his life. Saul at the time then became Paul. And Paul here is, is really challenging those who are reading this letter with, with the proof of the resurrection, that, that they know Jesus is risen because his tomb is empty, challenging those who are still alive, who saw the crucifixion, to go to the tomb where Jesus was buried. You know where it's at. Go see for yourself. And he says, but in fact, Jesus is risen from the dead. The tomb is empty. And so in this time period, you, if you were alive and you did not believe Jesus had risen from the dead, you could go to his tomb and, and discover for yourself whether or not he was in there or not. Now, at that point, if you wanted to believe his body was stolen, as, the, as we saw that the Pharisees had paid off uh, the Roman soldiers to say that if, if people were looking for the Christ and his body was missing, to tell them that the disciples stole the body. Now, that rumor was going around. We see that account in, um, I forget which book. It's in one of them, uh, one of the Gospels. But what we see is that you could go to Jesus' tomb at this time and, and see for yourself as to whether or not he was there. We know that his tomb was empty from these accounts, from church history, 
You can go today to Jerusalem and see the empty tomb. There, there is no bones of Christ that have been found. Jesus rose from the dead. Paul's claims to the resurrection could have easily been dismissed if, if Jesus was still dead because of these living eyewitnesses to the, to the crucifixion, the death, and burial of Christ. Another evidence we see of the resurrection is certainly in the witness of the disciples. These men, according to church history, lived the rest of their lives out as martyrs for their faith, as martyrs for Christ. Each of them, most of them, except for the Apostle John, who in, certainly was persecuted, certainly was persecuted for his faith, but the rest of them, church history shows that they were killed for their faith. Why would these guys do that? What was in it for them? Were they flying around in private jets? No, they weren't. Were, were people just rolling out the red carpet every time they came into town to come listen to them preach? No, they were not. They were being stoned. They were being whipped. They were being arrested. They were being spit on. They were being mocked. They were being kicked out of town. Their lives were being threatened to the point where they eventually died proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, who were these men before the resurrection? They were fishermen. They, they, they were everyday Joes. They, they just were people who believed in Jesus but saw him die and went and hid, right? They, they were hiding. They were fearful. They loved Jesus. They loved their rabbi. They loved their teacher. But when he died, the fear of, of Rome, the fear of being associated with him as we saw with Peter before he died, even denying to a little girl the fact that he knew Christ. These, these were men gripped with fear because they were men. They were just like you and just like me. But something changed. It was the resurrection. It was the seeing the risen Savior with their own eyes that transformed these men in an instant to where they knew that even if they were persecuted for their faith, they knew the truth. They knew what Jesus had commissioned them to do, which was to go and make disciples of all nations and that Jesus would be with them. These disciples were not soldiers. They were not warriors. They were common men. And boldness like this only comes from an event that radically changes you. This is the only explanation. Is there any other explanation as to why the church of Christ has grown and grown today amid such intense persecution in the early church other than there being an empty tomb? The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith. Number two, through the resurrection of Jesus, you can be saved from your sin. This is why the resurrection is so important for us today. If Jesus is alive today, if he rose from the dead today, Yet he never told us why he came, and he never promised us freedom from sin. What, what would our hope be today? The reason that we have hope today is because we know through Scripture, and we know through what Jesus said, what he came to do was to save us from our sin. It was our sin that separated us from God, Rebellion against God, because God is holy and just. God hates sin. God hates sin. God is not a God that looks away from sin. No, because he is holy, because he is righteous, your sin and my sin brings the wrath of God apart from Christ. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. 
It's not a slap on the hand. It's not a timeout in the corner. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your job. It doesn't mean if you sin today that something bad will happen to you tomorrow. No, the, the penalty for sin is death, period, death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is why the resurrection means everything to us today, because it means freedom from sin. God's penalty for sin is death, but through the resurrection, we see that Jesus has the power even over death. It's the resurrection that shows us that when Jesus said that repent and believe, and you can have eternal life, when he says that, we can believe it because Jesus has overcome death. The giver of all life can overcome death. We see that through the resurrection. It shows us the power of God. If God can overcome death, then certainly he, he is the creator of all life. It, it validates the creation, that God is the creator of all things, that he is the giver of life. He has power over death. The third thing we see we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we are already there. We can uh, go down to verse 54. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. <clears throat> when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing we see that is important about the resurrection is the hope of eternity with Jesus. That death is swallowed up in victory. Death no longer has any sting because of the hope of eternity in Christ. This is the hope that we have today as Christians, as believers. This is not the hope of the unbeliever. The unbeliever has no hope for eternity with Christ. Indeed, the unbeliever doesn't want eternity with Christ. The unbeliever is dead in their sins. The Bible says that the unbeliever is an enemy of God, like we all once were, apart from the grace of God, and the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. This is the reality today. In Christ, there is hope. Without Christ, it is eternal suffering and death. There is no in-between. When we pass from this life, it is either eternity with Christ, eternity with God, or it is eternity separated from God with the devil, with his demons, with all of the unregenerate, together, fully separated from God for all eternity because that is what sin brings hopelessness, darkness, pain, suffering, and the reality of being forever separated from the giver of all life, the creator of the universe, the one who loves all. But our hope today is being redeemed from death and eternal suffering and that one day we will be reunited with Christ in heaven for all eternity. Our hope today is in Christ which gives us this victory even over death. Gives us the victory over death. And the fourth thing I want to emphasize today of why the resurrection is important is that it shows that Christ is victorious. So when we say things like Christ is king, we say it with confidence we say it with confidence. We say it with boldness. We say it with assurity because of the resurrection. 
If you could go to Jerusalem today and mourn over the body of Jesus, there would be no confidence in the, in, in the transforming work of Christ. There would be no confidence in eternity with Christ because we would question the power of God. We would question it. But because the tomb is empty, because Jesus rose from the dead, because the first century church saw the risen Christ, they boldly proclaimed that Christ is king. They boldly proclaimed the gospel to repent and believe in the, kingdom, in the coming kingdom of God because Jesus is king today. He rose from the dead. He is God. He has conquered death. He is victorious over Satan. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we as the church today need to proclaim that. The world needs bold men and women who will go out and speak the truth, who will go out and come against the evil in our day. That we as victorious Christians would be like the early church, would be like the early disciples who went everywhere they went. They were either hated or they were received by those who, who were putting their faith in Christ. I want to be like the early church disciples today. I want to be a, 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 a believer who has the gospel on his lips who is proclaiming that Christ is king today, who is not bowing the knee to, to the lies of the enemy, who is not caving under pressure like we saw the disciples doing before the resurrection. We need to be like the disciples after the resurrection, not like the disciples who before the resurrection were fearful of people. What do we see that Peter said in the book of Acts as they were being persecuted, as they were being questioned by the authorities, Peter said, we fear God rather than men. Let us be those type of believers today who look at the resurrection and say, I fear God rather than men. I'm going to live my life in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to be a father who raises my children in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to be a husband who, who raises my family in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to be a wife who who raises my children in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to be a member of a church who proclaims the, the truth of the gospel to the other believers. I'm going to go out into the community and be a Christian who carries the, the sword of the Spirit with them everywhere that I go. That, that is what I want for myself. That is what I want for you Christ is Lord today. And if Christ is Lord, then at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This is why we are here today, to proclaim the truth of the resurrection don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't hide your light. Don't, don't limit yourself to think that, well, I, I can't eloquently speak in, in a way that, that the gospel will, will be received effectively. Listen, that is a lie from the enemy. That is a lie from the devil. What did the apostle Paul say? He said, I don't speak to you with eloquent words because if I relied on that, then the gospel loses its power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that works in the soul of the unbeliever. Yes, God uses us to speak the truth, but it is the power of God through us. Don't limit yourself in your mind. Don't, don't buy into the lie of the enemy that you can't speak the truth. No, we can all speak the truth because we carry the truth within us. Those of us who are in Christ have the truth. And what does the Bible say? What does Jesus say about the truth? The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. And Jesus also said, my word is truth. 
We have his word today, the, the revelation of Jesus Christ for us. From Genesis to Revelation, this is the true word of God that we live by today because it is life. It, it is because of the resurrection, we know that this book gives us victory. This book contains the truth that we need, that the world needs. We need to be living in it. We need to be Christians today who, on, the, on this side of the resurrection, are living victorious as Jesus is victorious. Victorious in every facet of life. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that your bank account is going to start exploding. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can walk in victory today because of the work of Christ in you, that you can speak the truth against the lies, that you can live your life according to the word of God, that you can begin to see the fruit of the Spirit manifest in your life. You are no longer bound in your sin. Sin has been defeated. Whatever you're struggling with today, if you are struggling with sin today, that sin has already been paid for if you are in Christ. You do not have to struggle in that sin. Jesus has conquered that sin. You are free from that sin, and you need to begin seeking the Scripture. You need to begin letting the Word of God convict you in that sin, and you need to give it over to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit wash you and cleanse you and free you from that sin because, because we, we don't have time to waste today. We do not have time to waste. There are people in your life that are dying and going to hell that will miss eternal life if we are not urgent with our truth that, that Jesus wants on our lips with the gospel so, what does the resurrection ultimately mean for us today? We, we've gone over four things that are very important today. The first is that it is the foundation of our faith. Number two, that it has saved us from sin. It reveals that to us, those who are in Christ. Number three, those who are in Christ, it is the hope of eternal life with Jesus and number four, that Christ is victorious. And in closing today, what the, crucifix, what the resurrection shows us today is that the work on the cross, the work of the crucifixion was legitimate, was validated. This is why we see the disciples turn from being fearful to being victorious. John 19, Jesus says, it is finished. When he's hanging there on the cross, after he has already stated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me in that moment when he is taking on the sin of the world and bearing the wrath of the Father that was supposed to be our punishment. Jesus taking that, after that moment, before he dies, he states with all authority, the word says he uttered out a loud cry, it is finished. Because Jesus knew in that moment that the work was paid in full, that the payment for our sin was paid in full, the one-time payment, that, that, that we do not today have to do anything to pay for our sin upon from trusting in Christ, which is a free gift by the grace of God alone. We put our faith in Jesus and our sins are forgiven because the work on the cross was validated and legitimized by the resurrection. Jesus completed his mission. The debt was paid in full. Jesus won the spiritual battle over the enemy. That, that victory is real today. The, the battle is over. The main war is gone. It, it, it's over. This is what we need to proclaim today, that Christ is the king today over the enemy. Our death sentence was substituted for eternal life 
in Christ because Jesus is alive today and we now have new life in him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, I thank you that you are risen from the dead. And you did not just rise from the dead to display your power. You rose from the dead to conquer death, to defeat sin, and to redeem your people to yourself. Lord, let us be Christians today who don't just say, I'm a Christian, who don't just become a statistic on the 2.5 billion self-proclaimed Christians. Lord, that we would leave our mark here on this earth, that we would be world changers, that that we would be confident in your work on the cross and in your rising from the dead, confident in the work of the Holy Spirit living within us, that we can go out with boldness to proclaim that that you reign today, that you are all-powerful today, that we would call people to repent today, to turn from their sin. Not just to be on Team Jesus, but, but to have the reality of eternal life, to be saved from sin and the lies of the enemy. Lord, help us to be bold. Help me to be bold today. Help us to be lights in, in our community, in Fredericksburg, in the surrounding Areas, Lord, that everywhere we go, that we would know that we bear the mark of Christ, that we follow Jesus. Lord, even in our own private lives, Lord, let us fear you. Let us live every moment of our life knowing that we are in the kingdom of God, that we are a part of that kingdom. We give you all the glory and all the praise that you are alive today. In Jesus' name, amen.